Welcome back. This is video two for chapter 14 for AP Statistics, and we're going to be putting the probability rules to work. In most situations where we want to find a probability, we'll use the rules in combination. A good thing to remember is that it can be easier to work with the complement of the event we're really interested in. So if you get stuck, think about, well, how can I incorporate what we know about the complement and make my life easier? Okay, before we get to our examples, let's talk about what can go wrong. Beware of sets of probabilities that don't add up to one. To be a le legitimate probability distribution, the sum of the probabilities for all possible outcomes must total one. Don't add probabilities of events if they're not disjoint. Okay, We'll talk about how to adjust for that with Chapter 15. Events must be disjoint to use the addition rule from this chapter. Don't multiply probabilities of events if they're not independent. The multiplication of probabilities of events or that, that are not independent is one of the most common errors people make in dealing with probabilities. So, um, again, next chapter, chapter we're going to talk about, well, how do we find an and probability of two events that are not independent? So we will get to that, but for today, for or they have to be disjoint, for and they have to be independent. Which brings us to another thing we need to watch out for. Um, don't confuse disjoint and independent events. Disjoint events can't be independent because once we know one occurs, the other one cannot occur. So they cannot be independent. All right, let's look at example 20 on page 339. It's about a, um, a class in a college. And... What, so what you see on the screen right now are just my um, attempts at organizing the information. We'll read the problem here together in just a second. Um, and you'll see that the probability of having no calculus is 0.55, the probability of one semester of calculus is 0.32, and the probability of having two or more semesters is 1 minus the sum of the other two. So 0.13, because that's the only, there I use the complement rule. I know, I know, well, you either have no calculus one semester or you have two or more. Those are the only three possible outcomes. Um, the or more in there takes care of all the other possibilities. So I was able to do one minus the sum of the other two. But let's read where I got that from. In a large introductory statistics lecture hall, the professor reports that 55% of students enrolled have never taken a calculus course. That's where the first statement comes from. 32% have taken only one semester of calculus, second statement, and the rest have taken two or more semesters of calculus. So that confirmed that that is the last category, so I was able to use the complement rule. The professor randomly assigns students to groups of three to work for a project for the course. What is the probability that the first group mate you meet has studied two or more semesters of calculus? Well, it's just going to be the 0.13, because it's just the next person you meet, boom, they have that probability, because these probabilities are for any individual person. B, some calculus. Well, some calculus means one semester or two or more semesters. Those are disjoint events. You fall into one category or the other, so we can add those together, and we get 0.32 uh, plus 0.13 is equal to 0.45. No more than one semester of calculus. Um, so that means you either have no calculus or one semester. So again, disjoint events, so we can add them up. 0.55 plus 0.32 is 0.87. Okay, moving on to example 22, or problem 22 on page 339. Um, you are assigned to be part of a group of three students from the intro stats class described in exercise 20. What is the probability that of your two other groupmates, neither has studied calculus? Okay, we have to assume independence here, which is reasonable because the professor did the assignment at random. Um, but in order to figure out the and um, probabilities for in this chapter, we have to be able to assume independence. And it's plausible here. All right, the probability that neither studied calculus would be the probability that the first person randomly chosen never studied calculus and the probability that the second randomly person never studied calculus. So it would be 0.55 times 0.55, which is 0 0.3025. All right, for part B, it says both have studied at least one semester of calculus. So that would be 
the probability of some calculus that we found earlier times the probability of some calculus because you've got two individuals. So that would be 0.45 times 0.45, which is 0 0.2025. All right, and C says at least one has had more than one semester of calculus. All right, so we're finding the probability at, at least one had two plus semesters of calculus. Now this is one where considering the complement is helpful. So you might do one minus the probability that neither had two or more semesters of calculus. All right, for any individual, the probability that they did not have calculus is point, um, the probability that they did not have two or more semesters of calculus is 1 minus 0.13, okay, or 0.87. Also, you could use the calculation um, method that we did in Part C, where you do 0.55 plus 0.32 to get 0.87. Sorry about the bell there. But e either way you think of it, you want to do 1 minus 0.87 times 0.87. So you can either add up for each person, okay, they have a 0.55 and a, of having um, no semester of um, calculus plus 0.32 of having um, one semester of calculus, so that would give you 0.87, or you could just do the 1 minus 0.13 to get the 0.87, and I'm just talking about what's going on in here. Okay, so this 0.257, I mean, 0.7569 right here. This is the probability that neither had two or more semesters of calculus. So the probability that at least one had two or more semesters of calculus would be one minus this value. And so you get 0.2431. So at least one, the probability of at least one is always equal to one minus the probability of none. And that, that is helpful to know. The probability of at least one is equal to 1 minus the probability of none. All right, example 24, part A, it says, it's referring back to problem 22. It says you use the multiplication rule to calculate probabilities about the calculus background of your statistics group mates in exercise 22. What must be true about the groups in order to make that approach valid? Well, they have to be um, independent of each other, where you're assuming that the calculus background of each group member is independent. Is this reasonable? Yes, the professor assigns students to groups randomly, making independence a reasonable assumption. If students have been able to choose their partners, probably not, because people who have taken many courses of math, maybe taken them together, are more likely to choose each other. Um, people who haven't had a, a great deal of calculus in their background, they may come from similar majors, they may know each other, but there's lots of ways that this could be violated, but because the professor assigned the students to groups at random, making independence, uh, that makes independence reasonable. Okay, guys, that's it for examples. I will see you in class next time, um, and we will work lots and lots of probability problems. Have a good day. I will see you soon.